Come on, man. Dang. Hey everyone, Ty here. Hopefully you guys are doing well. So, after the way things have been recently, you would think trucks are trying to give us a break. Eh -eh. In fact, some interesting things are about to happen here, really. I mean, Dahlia actually might make a comeback here in a little bit. It's going to be post-tropical, albeit. It's not going to have the uh, tropical characteristics that we were uh, used to. And also, it could be making a turn back towards the northeast here, possibly. We'll have to see what happens with that. We may see the Fujiwara effect here between uh, Franklin and Jose, which is going to be interesting. And it might happen within the next 24 hours. Then also, as we saw in the preview, three other systems could possibly be emerging here. The next name system will be uh, Katia. Which one of these three will get there first? Find out now, really. Really thinking it's this one. It should be pretty obvious, though. 90% chance of development. I mean, come on. But uh, the, the system that actually would most interest me is this third one here, though. Hasn't even formed up on satellite yet. But this is, of course, in the main development region. And as a result, and if it stays weak, actually, it has a better chance of actually making it towards the Caribbean, which would make it a threat towards land. Don't know if this would result in a U.S. impact, but this one definitely piques my interest, of course, with these other two looking like they're going to head out to sea. So let's go ahead. So let's take a look at the overall Atlantic using Cyclocane here. My favorite websites to use, but this is Idalia's track right here. And as you can see, after the end of this, which is about five days out, you can start to see it making a curve again towards the U.S. here. So anywhere from uh, New York City, the Long Island area, New England, you might need to watch this. This could very well make its way towards you guys. And because it's post-tropical, it doesn't necessarily need warm water like you would with a uh, traditional tropical system. Wind shear could affect it as well, but it may not do so much to weaken it. Also, the storm is moving at 21 miles an hour as well. It has a central pressure of about 994 millibars from what I last saw. But um, she's still she's still a beast here, so don't take her lightly. Idali is a shadow of its former self, yes, and it's also going to make a possible landfall in Bermuda. But by far, by far, she is not done. So we'll see what happens with her. There is a chance it could strengthen just a little bit after, just a little bit after this turn here. But I find it unlikely right now. Post-tropical systems are pretty hard to track as well, too. But like I said before, she's holding up pretty well at 65 miles an hour, especially for all the land that she has interacted with. But our interest also changes to the uh, Fujiwara effect. And anyone that doesn't know the Fujiwara effect, it basically happens when two tropical systems, regardless of their uh, strengths, end up uh, coming into close proximity of each other. And they start to do a really intense, really interesting dance, if you will. So if we go to Hurricane Franklin here, this is on the route to becoming extra tropical. And then here's Jose right here, actually. And then here's also the remnants of Gert, of uh, Tropical Storm, Storm Gert. But um, these three are going to do a little bit of a tango here. And then Franklin, of course, being the stronger of the three systems is going to win out. In fact, this is what's left of uh, Gert really already starting to do the uh, dance here. And then uh, also we have, like I said, Jose, which is going to be pretty much almost devoured by Franklin here after a while. So some pretty cool stuff going on here. Ultimately, none of these storms are expected to affect land in any way. This is all going to go out to sea and eventually dissipate. Worst case scenario, Franklin holds itself together long enough to maybe even make a push towards Greenland here. But um, we'll look at the spaghetti models for that. As far as satellites concerned, it's doing all right. It's nothing, uh, nothing incredible for sure. As far as strength is concerned, there are even a couple of models that want to push it back towards category two for a brief period before it starts to ultimately weaken. And then here's the uh, spaghetti models and the tracks couple of these do have it pushing back towards uh, Greenland at best. 
But for the most part, this is just going to go out to sea, probably weaken from that point onward and dissolve. Not doing anything more than increasing the swells and being what we would call a fish storm. So that being said, let's go ahead and look at some model data here. So this is what our current picture looks like right about now or just before now. This is at about 2 a.m. So we're right in between this threshold here. But here are all our systems currently. This one is most likely to become Katia. Not expected to really be a threat to land here. I have to actually look again to see what the uh, L name storm would be. But either L or the next storm that would really pique my interest as potentially being a threat will be the L or M name storm. So we'll see what happens with that. But as time goes on here, we still have plenty of energy coming off of the uh, West African coast here. This is a big part of what's our main development region or MDR here. You'll, refer, you'll hear me refer to that a lot during hurricane season. And then, of course, we also will have to watch towards the Caribbean and the Gulf, those waters being extremely warm. As we continue to go forward here, we have many pieces of rampant energy over here, of course. No surprise there doesn't look like a lot of these make progress towards land though the one good thing about the uh, predominant setup over here across this part of the Atlantic is when these ridges and troughs really start to form and deepen they just end up pulling these storms out to sea they don't really uh, make it very far to the west but we'll still of course have to keep an eye on it and then Pretty much a similar thing with the Euro here, the uh, European Ensemble. These are Ensemble models that I'm looking at, by the way, in case you didn't know. A little different from the operational runs that you're used to seeing with other weather YouTubers, myself included, because I tend to use them a lot also. But for Hurricanes, I tend to favor the Ensemble models more. Interestingly enough, this EPS Ensemble here does have this being pulled back towards the Northeast here at 156 hours out and actually making a secondary landfall. So that's something to keep an eye on there, or really a third landfall if it does end up impacting Bermuda, technically speaking. It's a small island, it's like that little speck right here, but nonetheless, that's still a landmass. Pretty much a similar deal though, in comparison to the uh, GEFS. Both models are showing uh, plenty of energy running around the Atlantic here nothing really close to the US at the moment so we'll have to see how things play out if this system does make it further off to the east though because as I've said before in plenty of videos in the past anything that's uh, further out into the uh, model run once we get past 100 hours in particular certainty definitely drops confidence definitely drops and of course by this point we're 360 hours out so plenty of uncertainty ahead what we see now could easily change so don't let your guard down. Nonetheless here, let's also look at uh, some parameters that would be important to uh, tropical development, particularly wind shear or lack thereof. A lack of wind shear usually is a good environment for tropical development here. I'm gonna have to move this back. Every time I, I forget this is not pivotal weather. Pivotal weather often will uh, change, the, uh, change the loop back all the way to the very beginning. Tropical tidbits does not do that. But one thing that's boating in our favor starting out the month of September is the fact that there's a pretty good amount of wind shear out here. So storms aren't going to really have a big chance of developing here. It's really going to be along the Caribbean and the Gulf here where things have a good chance of forming, if anything, based off wind shear alone. Really anything that forms on the fringe of any sort of cold front or um, any disturbance that tries to sneak off from, let's say, West Mexico might be a point of interest. But the thing is, a lot of the uh, predominant winds seem to be pushing these off to the west, so that shouldn't be an issue here. As time goes on, wind shear does build back up over the Gulf and parts of the Caribbean. Not super strong wind shear, but enough to definitely uh, help inhibit development. The, uh, main, the main development region here still seems like the most favorable area right now. Even then, wind shear is not incredible for that kind of environment. For uh, storms to form in that kind of environment but as time goes on as we go towards the middle of the month there are some indicators some signals that maybe we could see a little bit of a change going on here 
pattern also is apt to change over the US, which will also help affect the uh, wind shear pattern over the Gulf as well. So a lot of stuff to keep an eye on here, but things might be uh, turning in our favor for storms not to develop here too. So definitely something that I'll be keeping an eye on in the coming weeks. It's pretty much gonna be a similar deal for the uh, EPS here. We'll look at the same map and we'll pretty much see the same thing. I'm just going to go in reverse, but like I said, pretty similar, maybe a little less wind shear on the EPS, but nonetheless, like I said, after these uh, handful of storms form here, once we get towards September 10th, the models are looking uh, pretty congruent here. So one other way we can look at things as well is by looking at the ensemble members here. We'll look at both models, of course, again, because the more model data you have, the better. And the more um, model agreement that you see, the higher the confidence you can have in uh, your forecast. Just a little bit of a meteorology tip for anyone that's trying to learn how to do their own forecast. Of course, there's other stuff that goes into it as well. But that's just a base. That's just one little basic tip of many other <laughs> speaking awkwardly but anyway here's our uh, current tropical systems of course that we're uh, going to be keeping an eye on over the course of the next week here's particular areas of interest of course they're all going out to see from the looks of it right now all of these don't really look like they affect land which is good and then from beyond that point we don't really see too much uh transpire after that nothing close to land that is towards the Caribbean, towards the Gulf, nothing crazy going on there. And then it's pretty much the same thing with the uh, EPS here. This was from, this was actually uh, looking back in time before Idalia made landfall. And then here's our current tropical setup here over the next 60 hours. And as we continue to go on, there's Idalia trying to make one last little run here couple other tropical systems possible but those all go out to sea from the looks of it as well and then from that point on things seem like they remain pretty tame here but of course like I said the further out into the model runs that we look the less confidence we have because things can easily change I've seen them change many a times but uh, one thing that bodes in the favor of the tropics really starting to a lot for more development is just the sea surface temperatures across the Atlantic basin here. It's a little bit marge it's a little bit cooler on a marginal level here across the main development region, but once we start getting towards the Caribbean, towards the Gulf, getting into those 30 to 31 degrees Celsius ranges here, a few 29s in there as well, but that's more than sufficient enough to put it in perspective for you. Once you get to about 30 to 31 degrees Celsius, you're talking about 90 degrees Fahrenheit at this point. You would almost divide it by three. That's not the exact number. I have, I'll have. i post the formula up in the uh, corner right here. But as a whole, man, waters are still piping hot here. So we may not be done. Let's hope that uh, nothing really forms along this corridor here. Because that would turn into a uh, big problem once again. Idalia was troublesome enough. We don't need anything else to really form here. That's for sure. But um, as a whole, this is pretty much our Tropical Outlook video here. We'll uh, do a video tomorrow discussing what we could expect for the weekend. Don't expect anything super crazy. But, of course, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But until then, hope you guys enjoyed the video, found it useful. If you did, you know what to do. Smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, and also hit that share button. It's been Tyre Metalhead Weatherman. See you guys tomorrow. Until then, take care and have a good night.